Hey, welcome to the Phil Steele Plus Tour for October the 12th. Up for you today, I've got five selections, five quick hitters. Both come with a guarantee, a double guaranteed uh, Phil Steele Plus Tour this week. It was a disappointing week last week. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, we are going to produce some winners for you this week, and I'll show you all about the guarantee. But let's hop right in with that revenge game of the week. 3-0, and or 4-0 and this year so far. I got to tell you guys, it's pretty easy to pick a revenge game of the week because when you go to the, you know, on Phil Steele uh, Plus, we've got the schedule with numbers. And the schedule with numbers is updated like this. But let's look at the revenge record. 5-2 and two last week, 14-5 and five on the season, 62-25 and 25 over two years. Now, when you're picking from a category that's 62-25 and 25 over two years, it's pretty easy to pick 4-0, and oh, right? And that Illinois, as you see, is revenge three play, and let's get to it for this week. Now, uh, the revenge games are hot, uh, 67 or 62 and 25 over two years. And this week we have Illinois with uh, Brett Bielema, and he's taking on his old defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters. Now, last year, Ryan Walters, in his first year at Purdue, uh, played Illinois, and they were at home. And if you take a look here, it was a close game at the half. Purdue led 16 to 13. Illinois actually had a 200 to 188 yard edge. Keep in mind, Half times are right here. Very valuable. It really tells you how the game is played. We'll get to that when we get to Oregon later. Really show you some half times there. But uh, the one thing I want to point out, they ended up winning 44 to 19. Now that's uh, Brett Bielema's ex defense coordinator skunked them last year. And you look at Illinois' defense under Ryan Walters two years ago, they were tremendous 274 yards per game. Last year, they slipped to 378. But this year, they're back in form. 310, a second-year defense coordinator. you got to know he's grinding an axe to win this game, as is Coach Bielema, uh, who's got to be thinking, we're coming off a bye, we're playing Purdue, we want to win this game and win big because of the way they were trounced last year. The revenge games have been doing extremely well. And we also have individual player stats here. And something I want to point out about uh, Hudson Card. His first game, he had 24-25. 273 yards of 4 0 ratio. That tied for the best uh, completion percentage, uh, throwing over 20 passes in a game in NCAA history. Phenomenal. But look what's happened since 11 24, 7 17, 18 25, and 11 21. And keep in mind, that first game was against an FCS opponent. So if you add up Hudson Card's uh, stats against FBS foes this year, it's just 54% with a 3-4 ratio. So you've got a Purdue team that, as you know, is struggling. Uh, went against them with Wisconsin last week here on the tour. Went against them with Nebraska uh, uh, two weeks ago. Went against them with Oregon State on inside the press box. Went against them with Notre Dame. I believe that was on the tour. So we've actually gone against them each of the last four weeks. Won all four weeks and won dominantly. These guys are being outgained by 133 yards per game. Ryan Walters' defense giving opponents 140 yards per game above their season average. Meanwhile, Illinois' defense holding opponents to 97 yards per game below their season average. Uh, so this has, sets up well. You've got the much better team. We are riding high at 4-1 uh, and one right now. The line was 19.5, jumped to 22.5 last night, but I still got to go with Illinois, minus 22.5 over Purdue as your revenge game of the week. All right, let's get some house cleaning here. First of all, we'll talk about the tour record, which, as I mentioned, disappointing last week. Last week, the tour selections went two and three. I always tell you the records as it is. That drops the record to 43 and 29. Now, I got to tell you guys, my inside the press box selections are my best plays of the week. What I do is I determine my inside the press box selections. I talk to my computer. I get my computers inside the press box selections. Those are our top plays for the week. But I want to win these tour plays. They are the next set. They are the next one down. And when you're dealing with 48, 60 games a week, these plays have had great success. I'm annoyed that they lost last week. A rare losing week. Uh, as mentioned, 43 and 29 over the last 14 weeks. So we're going to come out with a guarantee this week and a guaranteed winning week, or you get next week's college inside the press box, a $20 value free. 
And if you haven't been with getting college inside the press box, uh, you'll be able to get a taste of it. But that's only if the selections lose, and I'll touch on that in a second. Quick hitters went 3-5 and five last week. Disappointing. 138 and 114 over the three years. Guaranteed winning week for the quick hitters. The NFL play did win with Denver last week comfortably. Now 6-3-1 and one over the last 12 weeks. I'll have more on that when I give you another NFL selection. And Chris's FCS plays actually went 1-3. and three. Now 8-4 and four on the year. You know he'll bounce back. And I got a feeling he's going to have one of those Ivy League plays of the week. Uh, the code word is win big, by the way, if any of these guarantees don't hit this week. And then the other thing I want to point out is how have the guarantees done? Well, let's take a look here. Last year, after a losing week, I had a guarantee, week six of the tour. We went four and one on the selections. Then after a losing week, we had a guarantee on week 12. We went four and one on the selections. That's what I'm expecting this week, at least four and one on the selections. By the way, last year we had a guarantee on the press box. I believe I only had one all year. Uh, and the guarantee was for week seven. We went five and zero oh on the guarantee. Haven't had one yet. Haven't needed to uh, because there's been no losing weeks. Uh, the press box is doing great. So far this year, we did have a quick hitter guarantee two weeks ago. We went three and two. So as you can tell, when we guarantee something, they generally win. But if they don't win, remember, my five free selections must have a winning week or you get October 18th inside the Press Box College free. The five quick hitters must have a winning week or you get this week's inside the Press this week's inside the Press Box NFL free. Sunday morning, just log in. You would type in the code WINBIG. That's only if they don't hit. I expect them to hit. I expect both guarantees to hit. But if for any reason they don't, even though this is absolutely free, you get my press box college next week or NFL this week free. Just type in the code word win big. One is the guarantee on the selections. One is on the five quick hitters. All right, let's get back to the action here. And we'll go with the computer wanted to use. Actually, uh, I don't think Todd put this one up yet. It's uh, the Louisiana Tech game. Todd will get that up for me shortly. I talked to him about it yesterday, but we didn't get the picture up and I didn't double check. So let's go on to the next one, which is wrong team favored. Wrong team favored. And we're going to take a look at Wyoming against San Diego State. Put San Diego State on the left and we are going to put Wyoming on the right. And let's see what we got here. Wyoming on the right. All right. Here's the thing with Wyoming. They were very disappointing early. Now, Arizona State's proved to be better than expected, but they did trail 48-0, scored a late touchdown. They lost to Idaho at home, did have the yardage edge in the game. They lost to BYU, and at the time, that was very disappointing, but BYU's 5-0 and straight up in ATS. They lost to North Texas, but once again, North Texas playing extremely well. Here's what got me. I When I talked to... Uh, uh, head coach Jay Savell, he was very high on Evan Svoboda this year, and Svoboda hasn't had a great year. But against Air Force, they trailed 13-7 at the half. We're out game 219-83. to They finally played like you thought Air Force would in the second half of that game. And in fact, Svoboda for the game against Air Force finished 15-21 for 165. Uh, so now I think Wyoming got their season turned around right there. First game of the season, Mountain West, your record is 0-0. Zero and zero. What happened in the non-conference doesn't matter. They gained a lot in that second half. Uh, they had the uh, they, they won the game in the second half 24-6 uh, to six and ended up with the yardage edge in the game. Also note here, Wyoming, it's got Air Force listed as one first down for the game. That is not correct. Uh, Todd will get that corrected as well. So anyway, you've got a Wyoming team that really has everything to play for. They're 1-0 and in the Mountain West. Now here's San Diego State. Uh, they beat Texas A&M Commerce. They got beat by Oregon State 21 nothing. Oregon State's playing well. They got beat by Cal by 21. Lost to Central Michigan by 1. Did beat Hawaii. Now that game was back and forth. They got out first down 24-19. to But now they're playing again the third straight week. Wyoming's the second straight week in altitude. And by the way, whenever Wyoming has two straight weeks at home, they are actually 6-1 and one straight up. Go back to last year. Second straight week, they win. Second straight week, they win. Second straight week, at least. Third straight week, actually. But second straight week here, they win. So right there, last year, they were 3-0. and uh, You go back to 2021. Second straight home game, they lost. That was their one loss. Uh, but if you look at the records over the last three years, 6-1 and one for Wyoming when they've had two straight home games. It magnifies the altitude advantage. 
and that's straight up. And that's all they have to do here because they're the underdog. As I mentioned, I feel the wrong team is favored in this one. So you've got them off a bye. You play well that way. And uh, they go back 12-3 and three to 2016 uh, for this one. So I expect a big finish for Wyoming this year. And if you look here at the um, – tour or at the uh, schedule once again we'll click back to that schedule this schedule is available for all phil Steele plus members now the green are the best bets and i keep track of the best bet records up here as you can see like uh you know here's a two and five for strength of schedule last week still 47 and 33 over the two years i mentioned the revenge look at this situation went nine and two last week you gotta like that and then i wrap it up all over here with the overall best bets i add them all up and if you look wyoming's a three and a half best bet now this takes into account wyoming in the plus minus ratings says wyoming by 7.8 my preseason line was wyoming by 7 action network at the preseason had wyoming by 17 strength of schedule says wyoming but only a yellow yellow would be a half so that's three and a half in favor of wyoming and it's wyoming is a three and a half best bet on the schedule with numbers and once again to get to the schedule with numbers uh you just go to the um, phil Steele plus menu if you're a Phil Steele Plus member, you'll get this menu, and you click right here, Schedule with Numbers, and click to download the schedule. It's got the lines updated for you every day, TV, time, best bets across the board. Tells you what everything has got on the game. Well worth it. And uh, this Phil Steele Plus menu loaded, there is so much over here that you get. You get the strength of schedule play. You get the strength of schedule. UCLA has played the toughest schedule in the country. That's interesting. Um and this is updated weekly. You get the strength of wins, pain of losses. Let's see if that's updated. It should be. There it is. Update as of 10-8. Texas. Uh, let's see who's got the best. Now, here's what the, how this works. You get credit for every opponent's win, FBS opponent win, uh, for, that they have if you beat them. And you get credit for every FBS, anybody's losses if you lose to them. Texas. Look at this. Indiana 10-0. Oregon 10-0. Miami of Florida, 10 and 0. Ohio State, 7 and 0. That's interesting. Oregon has beaten teams that have won 10 games this year. Ohio State has beaten teams that have won seven games this year. We'll talk about more about that lately. Later, New Mexico actually comes in 0 and 12. They haven't beaten any team that has a winning record this year. Same thing line here. If you beat an FCS opponent, you get credit for zero wins. So there's still a lot of opponents that have won games, but they don't get credit for any wins because they've either beaten an FCS foe or they've beaten a team that hasn't beaten anybody yet, which is uh, really interesting. And this adds the records all the way up. So use that each week. Uh, in the plus here, you can also go to offense and defense. I haven't even looked at these. I'm looking at them now. Ohio State is number one. Uh, they actually gain 168 yards above their opponent's average. Their defense holds foes to 173 below. Oregon comes in pretty close, number six. We've got Miami of Florida, Texas, Mississippi, Oregon, Iowa State, which I think could be the best team in the Big 12 right now. Tennessee, look at Army up here. They're doing a, a great job in this category. Who's at the bottom? Kent State's at the bottom. Oh, Purdue's at the bottom. That sort of reflects a little bit on the Illinois game. Purdue, Purdue allows opponents 97 yards above their average, and their defense, or I mean, they gain 97 yards less than their opponents allow, and their defense allows opponents 140 yards above their season average. They're at the bottom. Use these each and every week on Phil Steele Plus. Use all these things. They're available to you. I use all of them each week. Uh, special teams ratings, they are updated. Right now, UNLV's number one. you got to love their block punts that they've been getting. Uh, so those are the categories there. Georgia's number three. That's interesting. Uh, you can also get the strength of schedule, as I mentioned. Pass efficiency defense. Our pass efficiency defense takes into account the opponents you have played as well. So if you haven't taken on any tough opponents, uh, and you might get a 10.6 grade. Maybe your numbers are great. They're only allowing 48% FAU here, but they haven't taken on any tough passers. So that's that's an interesting thing to look at as well. All those things available for you on Phil Steele Plus. All right, let's get back to the tour. And I believe uh, Todd has got that uh, set up for you. We're going to take a look at the computer wanted to use, but I would not let him. It's 3-0 and this year. I know, I know, I have a lot of folks complaining. Why don't I let the, the computer use the plays? We'll talk about that in a minute. But well, let's take a look at this week's matchup. And it's Middle Tennessee against Louisiana Tech. Now, the computer wanted to use this play. 
Louisiana Tech, 27 to 13. It says Missile, Tennessee, but that's actually Middle Tennessee. That's just a typo there. Um, that'll get corrected by the time press box goes out today. But uh, the game is on Thursday. I usually don't put best bets in press box on the weekday games, so I wouldn't let my computer use it this week. But my computer loves it. Look at this. Tech is only a four-point favorite in the game, but my computer says that Tech's going to have 110 to 70 rush edge, 296 to 27 pass edge, 406 to 297 yard edge, win the game 27 to 15. My computer's banging on the table. I want to use Louisiana Tech as a play. I wouldn't let it. And uh, I'm going to show you a quick note there about the battle is on. Uh, And this is interesting. So far this year, I'm 16 and 9 on the best bets. My computer is 13 and 9 on the best bets. And as you know, I did that blog two weeks ago. I talked about the fact I'm scared because my computer really got hot in the second half of the year. Well, my computer beat me last week. In week two and six, it's one. I won week one, three, four, and five. Now, had I let the computer use those three games, we'd be tied right now at 16 and 9. And I'll tell you what. If at the end of the year I've got the lead over the computer and these games I wouldn't let him use end up putting him with a better record, then I'll include it and say he won. But right, so for the moment, you could say we're tied, but in reality, I'm only counting the best bets 16 and 9 versus 13 and 9. I'm in the lead right now. Now, my computer is 29 and 16 the last 14 weeks. And the, the FBS versus FCS bets went here. 40 and 24 for inside the press box for the year. You got to love that. If you want to get this week's single issue, 52 games, just $15. Use the term Battle24 and you get it all for just $15. Go to the Phil Steele store. And uh, if you go to the store, I'm only going to show you this once. And then we're going to get right into rapid fire plays coming up. Uh, go to the store. Use this once. Here is your college uh, single edition. Uh, or that's college for the season. The single edition will be up at Thursday uh, today, and you'll be able to click on it and get the current edition. Type in that code. You get $5 off. All right, let's get back to this game. And for this game, uh, here's my complete write-up on the game. I agree. I've got Louisiana Tech winning 27 to 13. The computer has a 27 to 15. My computer wanted to use it, but I wouldn't let them. It's Louisiana Tech, and they are um, minus four over Middle Tennessee. And if one thing I do want to show you here on this, let's click back over here and get to the Phil Steel Plus. We're going to put um, Middle Tennessee on the left, and we're going to put Louisiana Tech on the right. And let's get one thing here. Look at the AGG for this game. Louisiana Tech is playing to an 88.1. Remember, the average game grade has no starting point. It only takes into account your opponent and the stats. Once again, no starting point, only opponents and stats. It says Louisiana Tech is seven points better, plus the home field edge. Uh, that's a pretty significant advantage for Louisiana Tech. So, computer wanted to use 3-0 and this year. Let's make it 4-0. and Take Louisiana Tech, minus four over Middle Tennessee State. All right, next one we go to is the AGG and situational game of the week. And we're going to look at Missouri, and they are taking on uh, UMass. And so we're going to put Missouri on the left and UMass on the right. And let me give you an example. I told you how the schedule on the, uh, the schedule with numbers had a 9-2 uh, and two record last week. Here's how it works. And it does have a 3.5 play here on UMass this week. Here's how it works. It, I take a look in the, prior to the year, and I look at the month of October. So if you look at the month of October for UMass, they play at Northern Illinois home to Missouri, and home to Wagner, and they have a bye. So what is their most important game of the month? Clearly, you are hosting an SEC team. How can you not be excited for that? Most important game of the month, Missouri, uh, month of October. They were at Texas A&M last week, at Massachusetts. They play Auburn. They play at Alabama. What is their least important game of the month? Auburn. And you got the fact that UMass has a bye next week. This is a massive schedule edge for UMass. But there's more. It's not just the reason. Let's look at the AGG. Missouri this year hasn't really been all that impressive in my mind. You look at the fact they escaped Vanderbilt with a win. They only beat Boston College by six. Yeah, they had a couple shutouts early. And then last week they just got dominated by Texas A&M. 
UMass, meanwhile, has been playing everybody fairly tough. Eastern Michigan with fourth and 14, Toledo within 15. They did lose to Buffalo bad, uh, beat Central Connecticut State, only lost to Miami by three, and only lost to Northern Illinois by 14. And in fact, they're plus 22 yards per game on the season. They're playing to an average game grade to 85.6. So give them the 3.0 edge that puts them to 88.6. That says that Missouri should only win this game by 18 points in the AGG because Missouri's only playing at a 106 level. They're not a top 25 team right now. They're at number 44 in the country. So uh, the AGG clearly says take UMass plus a 27 and a half. The schedule clearly says take UMass plus 27 and a half. But wait, there's more. What has UMass done against SEC teams? I went back and researched it. You could do that. You could click on the last 40 years results here and take a look at every game that UMass has played against the SEC. I'm not going to waste your time. To go to your Phil Steele Plus, go back and look at the SEC games. You will find that UMass is 9-1 and one against the spread versus the SEC. But wait, there's more. Let's take a look at uh, Missouri and how they do as a double-digit away favorite. And these I love. These are You get some of these in the magazine, but these go in-depth. So... Uh, let's go to uh, conf- or favorite, or let's go to a way for double digit away favorite. Do we have that on here? Conference dog. Let's way favorite. There's seven and 11 as an away favorite. Um, favorite by double digits. They are one and three, three and five, three and nine. And I don't see away favorites, but anyway, Missouri is one and five as a double digit away favorite. And as you could sell here, three and nine overall as a double digit favorite. So you got a poor away favorite, an outstanding team against the SEC. The AGG loves it. The situation loves it. We're going with UMass plus 27 and a half. Part of your five guaranteed selections. Let's get to the last one. And I'm going to call it the line value play of the week. And last week, I'm a little bitter about this Oregon State game. I had Oregon State or uh, I believe my computer had Oregon State. Let me double-check that. Uh, no, I had Oregon State as a best bet last week. And Oregon State, let me show you. Let's go get Oregon State, put them on the left. We're going to put Nevada on the right and put Nevada over here. Now, last week in this game, if you click on it, against Colorado State, felt pretty good at one point. Uh, it is 21 to 10. They're laying 10 and a half. So I, f- I feel real good. We're in the fourth quarter. It's middle of the fourth quarter. And collegepressbox.com lets me put the box scores up. I go through every single play of every game. This one I watched closely, so I didn't have to go through the play by play. But you didn't watch it. And instead of showing the clips of the game, I'll just take you to the fourth quarter. I feel good about the game. Colorado State's third and 10. We're going to get the ball back score again. Oregon State's going to dominate just like they dominated Purdue. Well, guess what? Third and 10, they get a 13 yard pass. Ouch. Here's a third and seven. Okay, we're going to stop them, get the ball back. Nope, 19 yard pass. Here's a third and 15. Okay, we're going to stop them, we're going to get the ball back. 16 yard pass. Now, here, they're third and goal at the 10. All right, we're going to hold them to a field goal. We'll go down, score a field goal. We'll still cover, or we're going to get a touchdown. Look at this. A third and goal. They get a 10-yard touchdown pass. Very frustrating. They actually came back and took it to overtime. But had Oregon State got one of those stops, I feel very comfortable they would have covered. But I wanted to take Oregon State, crinkle them up, and throw them in the trash can after not covering for me last week. But upon looking at it closer, I see that Nevada is actually just 3-12 and 12 straight up at home. We'll click over there. Um, if you take a look at their home record, they were two and ten coming in. They've gone two and one this year, three and or one and two. Three, they are three and twelve straight up at home. They're one and two this year. And look at their home favorite uh, home dog record: zero and three, zero and six, one and nine coming into the year. So uh, they have a very poor record at home. Oregon State are ready when at San Diego State, a team that's are better than Nevada and beat them 21 to nothing. And that was on the road. They're capable of covering on the road. They've got Hankerson, a running back, McCoy at QB. They're playing uh, extremely well this year. Oregon State has delivered some winners for me. And their average win this year is by 17.25 points per game. And also remember here, look at the Oregon game. They had a 218 to 217 yard edge at the half against the powerful Oregon team. Now, last week, Uh, My line on this game would have been Oregon State minus 10, maybe minus 14, and they're only minus 4 in this one, or minus 3.5, I should say. So there is a lot of line value coming in here on Oregon State, 
And when we look at the schedule, once again, schedule with numbers, it does come up a three best bet. Uh, my plus minus power rating says Oregon State by 10. My preseason line was 13. Uh, Action Network had them by 14.2. So Oregon State's a three best bet. I'm only showing you some, the ones I'm using on the tour. You can get the full list with all the best bets when you go to philsteel.com. So there are your five guaranteed selections. Let's get to your five quick hitters. Quick hitters are guaranteed. I went through everything on that. And uh, before I get to it, just one more quick uh, tour special for you. And this one actually brings the price uh, for uh, the Inside the Press Box College for the year, under $100. How about that? And how did we do that? Well, the battle's on. I gave you the records already. We know all that. You get 25% off. It's 129 right now. The price just dropped down to because there's nine issues left. 96 bucks. You type in the code word tour VIP, you get 25% off college, 25% off NFL, postseason, or the bundle, which is college, pro, and the postseason, all for just $229 or $171.75. And keep in mind, when you sign up for Inside the Press Box, you not only get a tremendous newsletter with a ton of selections at 25% off, you get Phil Steele Plus through the Super Bowl, a $99 value. So just go to the tour, type in Tour VIP, or give us a call, 866-918-7711. That's your price right here when you type it in. All right, let's get to those quick hitters, and we'll try to make them quick for you, but let's get winners. We're going to start out with Memphis at USF this week, and we're going to put Memphis on the left, USF on the right. Now, USF is going through the hurricane right now, but it has cleared Florida. They should be able to play on Saturday, and we've seen teams – uh, come out, and they're they're pretty resilient once this stuff happens, and I think we're going to see that out of USF this week. The couple things I want to point out to you, if you click on the opponent here, uh, you get the last 27 years matchups. And look at USF. They have covered five of the last six in this matchup against Memphis, so they match up well. Once again, if this is red, that means they lost the game straight up. If it is green, that means they won the game straight up. You don't even have to look at the numbers. If this is green, they covered. You don't have to go 13 and a half. They lost by nine. They covered. It's done for you. The math is done for you right there. Over here, it tells you what the home team has done. If the word is win, that means home team won. If it's in red, that means home team did not cover. Here's your totals updated over unders. This is the stats of the game so you can see how they do. Uh, look at this. The last two years, USF has held Memphis to 98 and 139 yards rushing. Meanwhile, last year they ran for 226 yards on Memphis. That's, that's, those are all good signs. The other factor in this game I want to point out, you go to the last 10 years and look at how Memphis does on the road. First of all, uh, Silverfield's got a great record at home, but he's only 7-13 and 13 ATS on the road, as you saw by those stats there. So you've got a, a series, and you've also got the road. I'm going to take USF plus 7.5 over Memphis. All right, we got Texas and Oklahoma. And for this one, it's at a neutral site. They split the stadium right down the middle. I'm going to put Texas on the left and Oklahoma on the right. Now, if this game was not Texas-Oklahoma, I would side with Texas. I mean, they've... They, they are the better team. They're number two in the country, Oklahoma number 34. Look at all the green here. Uh, look at the red on offense. They struggle. They Oklahoma does have a really good defense, holding a points 91 below their season average. AGG would have it uh, one, about 19. But let's look at the series history here. And the amazing thing about the series history, look at these double-digit lines. There have been one, two, three, four, five times there's been a double-digit favorite the last 12 years. Guess what? All five times the underdog is covered. In fact, look at this. One by four, one by seven, one by eight, one by seven, one by three, one by eight, five, five, seven, five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The last 11 years, 10 times it's been decided by eight or less. This is a series play. And the dog, by the way, is nine and three ATS in that span. We're going to take Oklahoma plus 14 and a half over Texas as a series play. All right, let's get to your next quick hitter. Now, try to make these quick. We're going to go to Utah at Arizona State. And this is one we're going to put Utah on the left. They are the visitor. And they are here. And we're going to take Arizona State. And they are the home team. We're going to put them here. Now, Utah, you know, we don't know if Cam Rising's playing. We're not falling for that banana in the tailpipe routine once again. So even if it is Isaac Wilson, let's take a look at how this team's gone series-wise. Uh, Utah won 55-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3, 35-3,
34 to 13, 35 to 21, and 21 to 3 the last four years. That's an average win in this series by 25.5 points per game. If you go back to this Oklahoma State game, uh, you probably remember that. Used it, uh, I believe, as a press box best bet. Utah led 22 to 3 with five minutes to go. Now they let in some backdoor scores against Oklahoma State, but they dominated that game on the road. Uh, Oklahoma State is just as good as Arizona State this year, although they've had been struggling the last couple of weeks. But Utah, I think, put them into that tailspin with that dominant win. And uh, you've got yourself, uh, when you look at the schedule on the tour once again, uh, oops, wrong one. Uh, let's go back to the schedule, get this off of there. Take a look. Utah is a three best bet play. They Last year, score comes up. The Action Network won, and the last time here, Utah was a 15-point favorite and won by 21. So add it all up, we're going to go with Utah, minus 4.5 over Arizona State. All right, this next one is a, uh, a big game this weekend. LSU is at home against Ole Miss, and we're going to take a look at this matchup. The things I want to point out here, let's go take a look at the series history. And this is one that's been dominated by the home team. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The home team is 10 and 2 straight up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 1 ATS in this series. It's at night. It's in Death Valley. And LSU's at home. So you gotta love the home team here. And how does LSU do as a home dog? Well, once again, we'll go back to our schedule right here. And home dog, we got two and oh. 4-0-1 the last three years uh, at home. Uh, so that's very impressive. They're very tough at home. 4-0-1 as a home dog. 8-4-1 over 10 years. And if you take out this 1-2, that would be 7-2-1 over the last eight years as a home dog. So you've got an outstanding home dog at night in the desert. And finally, uh, I believe this one, does this one match up on the schedule with numbers? Uh Yes, it does. LSU's actually a four play. That'll turn into green. Then when they met last year, LSU would be an eight point favorite here. LSU's playing with legitimate revenge. Last year they lost 55 49. That game was back and forth, back and forth. I think LSU led big, uh, led by two scores in the fourth quarter 49 to 40. So they're up by two scores in the fourth quarter midway through and they lost. So it's one of those revenge plays. I want to remind you revenge plays are 62 and 25 over two years. And then the uh, the final factor here that I want to point out on this game is revenge. Oh, uh, schedule. And why is LSU a schedule play here? Well, they've also played strength of schedule, 76. Uh, LSU's played the much tougher schedule. USC, South Carolina, UCLA, South Alabama, they played a fairly light schedule, so a tougher schedule. And then the actual schedule itself, LSU's fresh off a bye. And Ole Miss is playing a seventh straight week. So add it all up. LSU is a best bet on the schedule, and they are a quick hitter here, a guaranteed quick hitter. LSU plus three and a half over Ole Miss. And we'll take a look at another big game here, and this one's interesting. Oregon is hosting Ohio State. And the one thing, once again, I'll make it quick. I've mentioned some things about Oregon and Ohio State already. I hope you were paying attention. Uh, so we won't mention those. These teams are playing close. But if you take a look at Oregon and what they've done, this UCLA game, remarkable. They should have led 35-3 to at the half, not 28-10. to I showed you this last week. They were deep in territory, about to score again, and they give up a 96-yard interception return for a touchdown and then only score six points in the second half uh, and only won that game 34-13. Last year, if you look, or last week, if you look against Michigan State, 31 to nothing. Michigan State scores a touchdown here and kicks a covering field goal with 25 seconds left in the game. So Oregon better than the scores would indicate. And the thing I want to point out, and this one that jumped out to me, was when, uh, and you could tell how teams do against top 10 down here. Uh, how, do, how does Oregon do against top 10 teams? How about 11 and 6? You got to like that. They are 8 and 2 ATS recent run against top 10 teams. How does Ohio State do against top 10 teams? That's interesting. You would think Ohio State does extremely well against top 10 teams, but they are 1 2 and 1. That's 2 4 and 1. That's 3 6 and 1. That's 4 8 and 1. That's 5 11 and 1. That's 6 13 and 1 over the last six years versus top 10 teams. So they don't they don't cover against top 10 teams. Oregon does. Uh, and 
uh, Oregon is 10 and 4 straight up at home in versus top 10 teams. 10 and 4 straight up at home versus top 10 teams. We're going to take Oregon plus three and a half over Ohio State. There's your five guaranteed quick hitters. You know the drill I showed you all already. All right, let's go to the NFL. A couple things to show you in the NFL. And this game's got pretty much everything working for it. Now, you remember last year, I showed you that NFL record 6 3 and 1. I wasn't being a genius. I don't even follow the NFL. I just took the Cleveland Browns, who had the number one defense in the NFL. And let's just show you this real quick. Their spread records last year. And the last four weeks of the year, I took the Cleveland Browns. And they, look at this, or last four weeks of the I don't count that last week. I don't do anything on the last week of the NFL. But win, 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 win. That was 4-0. and and I wasn't even thinking. I just said, you know what? Great defense. One for me last week. We're going to play them. And you know my motto, and I probably haven't used it a lot this year, but it's to play on streaks. When you play on a streak, you can win many times and you lose only once. Keep that in mind. Don't be trying to guess when streaks are going to end. So usually when teams deliver for me, I like them. They've got a top-notch defense. I like it. We're coming back with the Denver Broncos. Frankly, I can't believe they're the underdog in this game. They're plus three against the Chargers. Now, here's why I can't believe they're the underdog. First of all, let's take a look at the AGG. Uh, they come in at 86.5 over the last four weeks, and the Chargers 85.6. Now, that's close, but it still says the Broncos are the better team by basically uh, a point or 0.9. Now, they're playing at home for a second straight week, which increases their altitude advantage. Uh, last year, they had a second straight week at home. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs 24 to 9. Last year, they had a second straight week at home. They beat the Cleveland Browns 29 to 12. Last week, they had a second straight week at home. They beat the Chargers 16 to 9. They're at home. They've been at home for a second straight week. That increases your altitude advantage. So let's give them a three and a half point home field edge. That means the AGG says Denver should be favored by 7.4 or by 4.4, and they're a three point dog in the game. Now, Let's take a look at the series history. We also offer this in the NFL. Denver, let, first of all, look over here how the home team does in this series. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and 2, 5 and 2, 5 and 3, 6, 3, 7, 3, 8, 3, 9, 3, 10, 3, 11, 3, 12, 3, 12 and 4. But the last five times Denver has hosted the Chargers, here's one. And you see green and green. One and five, win straight up and against the spread. Win straight up, win straight up, and against the spread. 5-0 and straight up, 4-0 and 1 ATS. So the fact they win at home is really good. How does Denver do as a home dog? Well, we've got the numbers here as well. Last 10 years results, home dog Denver, 2-0, 2-1, 2-0. How about 6-1? and one? Now, they did lose as a home dog this year. So 6-2 and two is a home dog the last four years. And finally, let's look at the Chargers. Now, this is a divisional game. So how do they do as non in division games as a way favorite? How about three and seven the last ten years? They're not in this role very often, but when they are, they're three and seven against the spread. This one's got it all going for it. Let's keep riding these Denver Broncos. Take Denver plus three over the Chargers. Guaranteed selections, guaranteed quick hitters. If you miss the code or anything, go back and get it. Uh, winning these games is very important to me. As I mentioned, my best selections are inside the press box, but the winning these games really mattered to me. And let's have let's hope that it turns out like the other guarantees we had from last year, which went four and one and four and one, or this year's quick hitter guarantee, which won as well. I'd like to thank you for taking the tour with me this week, and uh, let's grab some winners this week.